In this video we will start implementing the game mechanics. Let's add code for the main script. First let's add some extra variables. Grid will be an array of true or false values indicating whether or not a cell contains a tile. Coles will be the number of columns in the grid. Shape will store the shape data for the current shape. And Pos will store the position of the shape within the grid. It will be useful to have a function that clears the grid each time we start a new game. So let's add this function. So we clear the grid, then resize it to match the number of grid cells. Then set each of the values to false, to say that each cell is empty. Then clear all of the visible grid cells. Another important function will be called place shape. This will be used to place the current shape into the grid, which means to set the relevant grid values to true, and set the color of the tiles in the GUI grid to the color of the shape. We will also use this function to test if it is possible to place the shape in a new position or rotation, and also to lock the shape into the grid. And we may use this function to remove the shape from the grid before it is moved or rotated. So here is the code for the function. The input parameters are as follows. Index. This is the position of the shape defined as the index of the child node or cell of the GUI grid. This is also the index of the grid array that stores true or false values to indicate unoccupied or occupied cells. Add tiles decides whether or not we want to add tiles to the grid. Color defines the color for the tiles. If we want to remove the tiles, we omit the color value and the default is the transparent value. Lock is set if we want to lock the shape into the grid. The function returns true if the shape could be placed or false otherwise. To only test if the placement is possible, we only pass in the index position value. So how does this function work? First we define some variables. The return value will be called OK and we set this to true. Size stores the size of the shape which is obtained from the size of the chords array property of the shape. Off offset is the distance of the edge of the shape from its origin and is equal to the first coordinate value of the shape's grid. We will use X and Y values to scan the shape's grid with a while and for loop. If we detect any invalid positions for placing a tile, we will exit the loops and return a false value. If the shape has a tile at the XY coordinate of its grid, then we process the following code. First we calculate the grid position. This corresponds to the grid cell index or the grid array index where we want to place, remove or lock in a tile. We print this value to the output window for debug purposes. If we want to lock, then we just set the grid value to true to say that this position is occupied. Else, if the grid position is not off the top of the grid, we carry on. First calculating a column coordinate we call GX. Next we test if the position is outside of the grid, or the position is occupied. If so, it's not OK, so OK becomes false and we break out of the loop. And the while loop terminates and we return the OK value. If not, and the add tiles input parameter is true, we add the tile to the visible grid by setting the grid cell's color to that of the shape or too transparent if we are removing a shape. Now let's create some functions to help us use the place shape function. Starting with a function to add the shape to the grid. Okay, this function calls place shape with the values it needs, like the position we want, and true for placing the shape, and false for lock, so we don't lock it into the grid and passes in the shape's color. Next we can add a remove shape from grid function. So this function calls place shape with a position and true for place, but it will use the default color which will make it transparent. 
hence removing it from the grid. And finally we would like to have a function to lock the shape into position in the grid. So we will have a function called lock shape to grid and place the shape with its position and false like don't place it but true for locking it into place. Now let's run the game to see if there's any errors in the code. It looks like it's okay. Okay, so now we can test the, this new code and let's do it in the test scene. In the test scene we can add an instance of the main scene. Then let's add some more buttons to do to exercise the functions that we've just created. So in the test scene let's add a new instance instance the child scene of the main scene open. with the main scene in this position it's overlapping at two of these buttons so we want to move it to the top and then it should go be behind these buttons so let's run the scene and pick a shape rotate left rotate right yes it's working so now let's add some buttons add text play shape and then the node on button down signal connect to the test script and we will add some code there to exercise placing the shape. Let's add a button. Let's call it add shape to grid and give it text add shape to grid. Move it into position above the GUI and go to node and connect the signal to the test script. Let's reference the main node with M. Let's replace the parse statement with set m equals dollar main that gets the main node and copies it the reference to m. So let's call the clear grid function on m and get a shape. And we can set the position index 35 and then we will call the new function add shape to grid. And let's see if that works. Replay the test scene. And we get our new button, click it, and it says call to non-existent function clear all cells in base center container GUI GD. So let's go to GUI GD, and I haven't put the clear all cells function in there yet. We'll call this from ready up here instead of two separate calls to clear cells. We're going to clear all cells. Yeah. So I think that should work. Let's run the test scene. Click add shape to grid. We didn't set the calls value so in the ready function we should have done that. So let's add it here. Stop the game. And we go calls equals gui.grid.get columns. In other words it gets the number of columns from the GUI grid. Look at the 2D scene again and let's move this button down here. Okay let's play the scene again. <laughs> oh yes it works fine. Add another shape, another shape. Great working. And add another button. Add a button. Create. Let's call this button remove shape from grid. Put the text remove shape from grid. Connect the signal from but for button down. And that gives us our, our callback function. So this is quite a simple one. We just call our function for removing the shape from the grid. So we go m dot remove shape from grid. And we can test this. Oh let's first place the button move it over there, put it next to this one and run the scene we have to add a shape, let's remove it add, remove, add, remove, it appears to work stop and next we, we exercise the, the lock shape to grid function so let's have a lock button Add another button just call it lock okay t 
text lock node button down connect and we just uh, exercise the our function for lock which was called lock shape to grid and if we go back back to the code for the the main place shape function remember we were we put some diagnostic thing print the grid position which you can see is being listed there so next oh let's just place our button put it there and run the scene and add a shape now look observe the the, the grid position coordinates were 26 the grid position index values were 26 34 35 36 so when we lock it it should do the same let's just clear that and so let's click lock and we can see the four the same four uh, positions came up and another shape to grid and we've got four more for that 25 to 35 we click lock and we get 25 to 35 so that's working next it'd be nice to actually be able to change the position of this to various positions to check it it spots it's at the boundaries let's add a spin button which allows us to enter numbers over a range spin spin box rather create that give it a range of our valid index values are between 0 and 199 for the grid positions. So we can each column has 10, there are 10 columns per row. So maybe a good test value range would be minus 10 up to 210. So and then the starting value should be say 35 like we had before so now we will use this this one's value we have a value property and it's called spin box so in the code where we had m.posit equals 35 we, this time we're going to go find the spin box and get its value as the position value. Let's uh, run the scene and see if that works. Now instead of 35 put in say 50 and then add the shape and we get a we get an error. Okay we want to cast the value in the test script here. We've got a value of a float from the spin box so we cast it to integer so we can go from a float into an integer which we want for the position index run the test scene add a shape and change this to 50 add another shape it's off the completely disappeared go back to 35 add a shape Weird. 36, it should move to the right one position. I have done. 37, 38. Seems to work. So when a part is not going to be able to be placed fully, as soon as the first invalid position has been detected, it stops placing the part. Hence we only see pieces of it. Now let's go down and see if it works to detect near the bottom of the screen. So let's put in a position of 190 for example. 195 should be around the middle of the bottom. Yeah, that, that's working fine. And then if it was goes to the right more, we start we should start losing parts. There we go. And then below the screen again. 
So I think this is working. So let's go for say 55 as a position. Add shape. And remove the shape. Add shape. Remove the shape. Add shape. Lock the shape. So I think we've now finished testing this particular function, the place shape function. It appears to be working. The next thing we'll, we will do is to make the shape move down the screen and this will involve testing the return values of the place shape function and having logic around it. So I will see you in the next video. Like and subscribe if you haven't done so already.